Phase 4, the Meat Factory. <sighs> this place smells like shit. That reminds me of home. Welcome back to Let's Play Splatterhouse. Some stuff in this level I've been looking forward to, so let's dive right in and get our hands dirty, so to speak. Get a load of this thing, huh? Break it open! It's rather presumptuous to start off with a wall of death, but that's just the kind of level this is. Take note of the chunks of rotten flesh that were strewn about by our assault. <laughs> oh, disgusting! And of course, a river of blood. And to further start things off right there, providing us with arms right in the beginning. Oh, a two by four. Handy. The corrupted. That ain't the corrupted. They're groupies of wannabes. Trust me, if that was a corrupted, your brain would be leaking out your nose right about now. In fact, those are the scrawny pink guys that we've slaughtered thousands of at this point. Not sure why Rick thought they were the fabled and feared corrupted. And there's one now. Get it! Yeah, let's one-shot that fucker, just to remind Rick that they are pathetic. Oh, turns out he was a carrot on a stick. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Fortunately, we brought a stick of our own. And it's just harmless pink guys. Seems like this level wants us to feel like we are slaughtering thousands in our bloody wake, and it facilitates that feeling by throwing all these scrawny worthless guys at us. It's unfortunate because at this point they can literally be killed just by hammering on the X button. You could play this level one fingered for some of the rooms. It mixes this room up a little bit by adding the blue guys, but as long as you play whack-a-mole with them, you are safe. There you go. Back to showering the screen with blood. And there's one final guy. He's taking an uncommon amount of punishment. And even getting a little bit of revenge for his fallen brothers. Not gonna let that stand. Someone's watching. Someone's fucking with us. Hmm. Missed all the screaming and hanging body parts. I think the camera's the least of our worries. Check it out. <laughs> Got more victims and more appropriate weaponry for the setting. This cleaver's gonna serve us well. I'm gonna leave that guy to his feast as we move along. What is that? Focus, Rick! Ah, foreshadowing a particularly threatening confrontation there. This room, alternatively, is pretty pathetic. Presumably these butchers here on the floor are scripted to stand up at some point. I rarely give them the opportunity. Oh, that guy finally got up. Oh, leave it to Cleaver. Sounds like even the music didn't think we'd be done that quick. Are they... are they human? Used to be. A long time ago. What's the matter, kiddo? Weak stomach? Guess they evolved out of having eyes like all the other monsters in this level. And do a little Hotline Miami on those guys in passing. And here's the one armed wonder again. Who's this prick? Well, we've been advised to use charge attacks, so I'm going to take the opportunity to upgrade them. I can only afford the first upgrade at the moment but that should do fine. It about doubles the damage of the charge attacks. Without that upgrade, they are just about worthless. Did a reasonable chunk. Enough that this won't be a completely frustrating nightmare. Yeah, 
this particular type of enemy severely lacks mobility, which is why charge attacks are so highly recommended. He's got the shockwave attack that the Territoids had, and other than that, he just waves that gigantic lumpy arm around. He's got his own mid-fight QTE, which we passed quite handily, and he's ready for a splatter kill. Which I failed. No big deal. Get another shot at it. Soon enough. There it is. I'm keeping his gross illithid face as a souvenir. At least until I accidentally throw it against the wall. Oh well. Stick with the cleaver. Our first piece of Jen's picture. And up ahead is the... something room. I can't read that. Oh well, probably not important. What the hell is that? It's nothing, kid. Just the trick of the light. Huh. Maybe that's why all the creatures decided not to have eyes anymore. They want to see that goddamn thing. I noticed one of these guys apparently impaled himself before we got here. Let's give him some friends. Nit, the mask called us sport. Figures he'd start using pet names while we're rectally impaling hideous monsters. And just like that, we are done. getting pretty good at this sort of thing. See, that's the kind of shit that got us an M rating. Uh-oh, the terror mask is deadpooling. That line ruined the game for me the first time I heard it. Now I kind of love it. Watch out! Let it touch you. We got some microwaves of our own to deal with. Hurry! We need to get out of here now. It's not nearly as big a threat as he's making it out to be. It kind of feels like everything we meet wants to eat us, huh? Good times, man. You said it. Also good times is this most hidden piece of Jen's picture in the entire level. A lot of neat scenery in this level. Looking forward to finding out what this machinery actually does. Some new playmates. Hit him harder. And more pointless killing. Not that I'm complaining. <laughs> It's fun to get some bodies flying every so often. Now we were directed to go that way, but over here is a jet of flames. And if we wait for that to fade away, we can get another cleaver. If we wait too long, those flames will come back and ruin us. They do a ton of damage really, really quickly. So you don't want to let that happen. And just gonna do a quick currency check here. Still short. It's like a torture chamber. There, there must be something we could do to help those creatures. Nah. They should very well be beyond help because they've been skinned and gutted, but uh, they're still writhing in agony. Poor bastards. Get 
Oh boy, more fun with microwaves. Uh, the level unfortunately drags a little bit towards this section. We will be rewarded for our patience in dealing with this, but uh, for now, more slogging through pink guys. Now we're cooking. We will get to make use of our cleaver here in this next section. So at least there's that. Keep it coming! In the meantime, kill some time by killing some guys. Here's our new fare. Yeah, we can boot him into the microwave for a quick kill, but... We got a cleaver. Plenty of opportunities for quick kills. Now we're cooking. And since we've beheaded everything here, I feel inclined to start using those heads to uh, kill enemies. You need a certain number of head-inflicted kills in order to get an achievement. That number is quite high, so I'm inclined to get some progress on that as soon as possible. Now we're cooking! Let's go! Here we are, final section. Still got people evacuating the previous section, lest they be burned alive. We're gonna see soon that that is completely futile. As soon as the microwave turns on in the section they came from, they just fall apart. Crowd surf is good for dealing with this large group. The mask really wants us to do splatter kills, but they're such a waste of time. I'm much more interested in saving time by going into berserker mode. Get this over with. We've dealt with enough of this already. There we go. Uh, we're being ushered out, but I want one more head kill. There we go. And leave them to their fate. There's nowhere to go. How are we going to get out of here? And out of the microwave, into the retro section. Some might say it's a downgrade. Looks like these crushers are uh, our main obstacle here. Surely they're instant kill, or perhaps not. I don't know, maybe I just got grazed there. I doubt they'd do us the favor of not instantly killing us any opportunity they had. Passing gears are pretty annoying, but ultimately harmless. Oh, did not mean to jump forward there. Your life's over, Rick. Time to wake up. That was shameful. Oh, yes. Just... Well, we got a fresh cleaver. That should help us make quick work of these guys. And kind of a hurry to get back to where I was. Rushing through a retro section, of course it was bound to happen. Oh, these retro sections are going to kill me enough times so that we're going to hear all the death phrases, probably. There's a lot of them. This game expects you to die quite a bit. Just going to take this as carefully as humanly possible. Definitely could have made it there, but I'm taking no risks.
Not sure why they started dumping more enemies back there. Anyone in the right mind would just jump away. I guess it's to put the pressure on and make you screw up. That guy just died to a crowd surf. Which kind of makes me think that enemies in these retro sections have reduced HP. Not that it matters, the enemies are rarely the obstacle. And another army of pink guys. Another army down. Red. I've just got these inexplicable gouts of flame that apparently accomplish nothing, but... This platform also accomplishes nothing, so... What should I expect? Onward to the control room. At long last, finishing this retro section. And into a scary dark hallway. I hope they don't do the scariest thing a horror game possibly can do. Throw JPEGs at us. That's kind of the low point as far as attempts at horror in this game. And more guys crawling down. Just gonna leave them be. Look at all these tanks. Those are empty. Look for a trigger, some kind of switch. There it is, right in front of us. This is going to lead us to a slightly better section than the last few have been. Take note of the signage. Days without our decapitation, zero. Certainly not since we've been here. Back to loading up spikes with bodies. Rick's secret talent. Made all the easier by being armed. But that only half filled our tank. Means we got round two to look forward to, and albinos. Seen how albinos are resistant to being thrown around. So I'm just gonna heal up with them and then crush them. I wonder if that guy would have sliced his friend in half with that cleaver. Probably should have waited to find out. Oh well. That did it. Just a good old-fashioned bloodbath, like the kind we've grown to love. And now I can finally afford that next power attack upgrade. The A-bomb here is a powerful follow-up attack to our charged attacks. We're getting a good look at it up here in the next room. But first... Gotta load our blood tank. Here's where all those bodies were headed towards. We don't have to do anything special here, we just have to kill the enemies. Their blood will magically find its way into the tube. That's gonna complicate things slightly. And my pipe broke. I should have got the fresh one out of the other room. No big deal. Maybe big deal, since we're taking half our life per hit. Turns out 
turns out this is quite a bit harder dealing with the one-armed wonder when there's lots of other enemies around. And just a few more hits. Take out the little guys. Liquify. Never mind, Berserker mode. That'll take care of everybody quite handily. Ooh, pushed him into the blades. Very nice. Well, no time to worry about that cackling and screaming. We've got a uh, piece of a picture to get. Safety first. Bend knees when lifting. Never forget. Let's see what these tanks accomplished. Oh, they opened up a nice elevator for us. That's a very complicated system they're working with here. Everything is blood powered. Well, hydraulic lifts. Anyway. Jenny, I'm coming. If you listen to that whole diatribe, you get the suicide ending. We had a choice of identical hallways. Okay, this is more like it. Really isn't. More monitors and another fresh weapon. And this is a room I quite like. Sort of like the microwave room, but this time it's instantly fatal for us if we fail to move on in time. And they're not nearly as generous with the timing as we'll see. Once again, the first section is just pink guys. If you just hammer the X button carelessly, you can accidentally walk yourself into the fan. And that's bad news, but it's unlikely. Go, go, go! Gotta get out of here, gotta bring the pipe. And that was all the time we had. A slight misstep can cause your doom in this section. It certainly killed me a few times my first time through, but I didn't really mind. It's got a nice atmosphere of tension in this section that uh, makes it a lot more tolerable than previous sections have been. We actually just barely made it out of there. We can certainly take these guys on toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but I prefer to feed them to the fans. I get some sadistic glee out of it. It's basically my favorite thing to do in this game. But they're starting to fight back. And they're slowing me down. We actually had to move back to a previous platform there. That actually tripped me up my first time through. I tried to move forward and jump straight into the fans. And it's back to useless enemies. And I lost all my weapons when that floor opened. Just like the microwave room, enemies who haven't been dispatched die automatically when the floor opens. I'm trying to get that cleaver on the ground, but it's being guarded. Had to take a hit to get it, but now that I've got it, I'm completely safe.
We don't really have to. That floor is not going to open up. We kind of got to concern ourselves with this guy. Bravo! That was the A-bomb there. That second rolling punch. I believe I do it. No, I tried to do it again there, but... I would have gotten hit. Uh, when there's a lot of cleavers lying on the ground, it's a great idea to start dumping them into the mini-boss enemies. Because they do do a very nice chunk of damage, as you can see. Well, that sure amused the hell out of him. Take another decapitation souvenir as we move onwards. Still wondering what I am, Rick? I'm just a mask. Waiting for the right actor to bring it to life. There's an answer to a question we didn't ask. Ooh, shotgun. Screw this useless head. We got a boomstick waiting for us. Now that is a big gun. Why don't you stay in there open? Well, we gotta break these guys out of prison if we're gonna kill them. Inexplicably, the way to do that is to kill them. This section's actually kind of difficult. Because our mobility is limited while we're holding the shotgun, we can't roll and we can't run. And the blue guys are incredibly fast and do almost our entire health bar per hit. Nevertheless, pretty goddamn fun. You know, genocide is such an emotive term, but in this case I feel it's appropriate. What say you? Before we hit that elevator, we should finish off Jen's picture. Oh, and I should mention that the song that played during our shotgun rampage was Headlong into Monsters by the band Wolfshirt. It's one of two bands that the game's co-producer, Dan Tovar, is actually in. So that must have been a pretty easy license to get. And while we're here, let's look at these horrible disemboweled monsters that are nowhere else in the game. Splayed out like that one guy in Event Horizon. And there's a nice skylight, but there's a fresh shotgun awaiting us. And I'll be waiting no longer to grab it. And move on. Any floor will do, fuck it. Guy. Yeah, we are screwed. If you've seen the Splatterhouse 1 videos, you know this guy too. It's the fabled Biggie Man. He's here to get his revenge. Sick of just harassing us from afar as he's been this entire level. But a shotgun makes short work of him, as it did in the first game. Rick? No! Look who's back. Show him why we call it Splatterhouse. Oh, if anyone knows why it's called Splatterhouse, it's Biggie Man. And of course, he's not going to give us the bullshit anticlimax of a shotgun battle that we were taunted into thinking there. Get on. 
This is a particularly excellent boss fight. Real turning point in the game, frankly. It's a little slow, you gotta wait for your opportunities, otherwise you're gonna get hit. Really though, that just sets a good pace for the fight and makes the boss seem precisely as threatening as he needs to be. Here's his big shockwave attack. Forces us into a series of quick time events. Unfortunately, they are the same quick time event every single time. So they are ridiculously easy in a really pointless attack. As they seem to come in pairs, there is yet another licensed metal song playing in the background right now. Though you can barely hear it over all the chainsaws. This is the requisite Lamb of God song, Walk With Me In Hell. It'll be playing through the whole fight. And this is your best opportunity to hear it, because it's only going to get louder from here. Almost got him down. And he's eluded us yet again. He will hit you if you don't roll immediately after that cutscene. It's pretty ridiculous. This phase is basically identical to the first, so I don't feel too bad about skipping it here. I'm in a rush to get to the final phase. Once again, he's gonna get a bullshit cheap shot on us unless we run right out of the way. This time we can't roll, because we are armed with the ultimate weapon. One of Biggie Man's own chainsaws. And of course, the sounds of this chainsaw duel are going to completely drown out Lamb of God. He's lost his shockwave attack, so this is pure saw-on-saw -saw action. Chainsaw does act a lot differently from all the other weapons, so you might be thrown off guard and not used to the lack of mobility and get yourself killed here. Not too terrible, because this is a fun fight. Wouldn't mind having to redo it up to this point, but still, it does feel kind of cheap. Of course, the benefit is the insane damage output that the chainsaw has, which is going to put a quick end to this fight. And that put him down. Time to give Biggie Man the chainsaw guts fuck he's got coming to him. This girl is Jake. You once told her you'd love her until the end of the world. It's time to prove it, Rick. The end of the world is coming. Oh, how romantic. And this English achievement here is a reference to the Japanese-only Splatterhouse Wanpaku Graffiti. And look by that portal at the end there that we are going to be leaving this bad future setting. So I'll see you next time for wherever the hell it is we're off to.